Good day, I'm Andrea Chisholm and this is your JIS News for Thursday, July 10. Information Minister Senator Sandria Faulkner has asserted that Cabinet is not aware of a U.S.-imposed arms embargo on Jamaica. At this week's Jamaica House media briefing, she stressed that the administration was committed to transparency between the government and the public. Our government certainly has nothing to hide if there are issues, there are processes, there are procedures, we have bilateral arrangements, and I believe at the appropriate time, if there was in fact such an action taken, the cabinet of Jamaica will be briefed and the government of Jamaica will make public whatever those are. Minister Faulkner also refuted claims that the executive was withholding information surrounding the resignation of Police Commissioner Owen Ellington. What happened last week, we had a commissioner of police who went into early retirement. And I think because of that, people want to speculate. Leader of government business in the House of Representatives, Philip Paulwell, has announced plans to ensure next year's budget debate is completed on time so funds can be freed up earlier for the new financial year. All of that debate will have to be completed so that the estimates are approved so that money can be spent come the 1st of April. While closing the 2014-2015 sectoral debate on Tuesday, he said the aim was to modify the operations of the Standing Finance Committee of Parliament. In that regard, Mr. Speaker, I have today written to my colleague, Leader of Opposition Business, expressing these intentions with a view to engage in a process of reform. He said the reform would also facilitate a more structured and time-sensitive scheduling of the sectoral debates. Government will begin public sector wage negotiations for the 2015-2017 contract period in November. In making the announcement during the sectoral debate, Portfolio Minister Horace Daly said a number of sensitive issues would be addressed. These include the question of the sustainability of some of the allowances payable in the health sector. On call, overtime, sessions, which have been the subject of recent disagreements between the health professionals and the management of some regional health authorities. Government will also address the issue of personal deductions paid over by government agencies on behalf of workers. In the meantime, Minister Daly said government had completed a review of the compensation packages in the public sector as part of plans to improve wages. A draft of the new regulations to be included in the revised staff orders is also being examined by stakeholders. The new staff orders is expected to be implemented during this financial year. Jamaica Customs has surpassed its year-to-date revenue collection target by $374 million. The agency was to collect about $27.8 billion as at June 18, but collections stood at about $28.3 billion. Revenue collections for the previous financial year were also above target. Minister Horace Daly says Customs will be able to collect between 10 and 20 percent more money once the automated system for Customs data is fully implemented is a port management system that will allow custom to track every single cargo down there and be able to calculate the, the revenue due to the country. Phase one of the project began in April of this year following training and technical support from the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. Labor and Social Security Minister Derek Kelly says the nation is making strides towards the implementation of flexi-work legislation. The minister says a number of legal barriers are being removed to pave the way for the wholesale implementation of the flexi-work arrangements nationally. Amendments are therefore being made to legislation such as the Shops and Offices Act and regulations, which impose restrictions on the opening and closing hours of shops. The Towns and Communities Act, the various minimum wage orders, the Holidays with Pay Act, and the outdated Women Employment of Act, which places restrictions on the ability of women to work at night. Minister Kelly was addressing a forum and workshop on material business issues, labor relations and the International Monetary Fund in Montego Bay. The Flexi Work Bill is to be debated in Parliament by September of this year. And finally, Industry Investment and Commerce Minister Anthony Hilton is affirming that government fully supports gender inclusiveness within the business environment. He says the necessary policy and legislative framework are being implemented to foster economic sustainability of businesses, including those at which women play strong leadership roles. 
The MSME and Entrepreneurship Policy, launched last year, provides a coherent framework to address some of the impediments to the development of small businesses. And one of the things that was added to it was the perspective of women in business. And we ensure that that is an integral part of the policy. Minister Hilton was speaking at the recent launch of the Jamaica chapter of the Women Entrepreneurs Network of the Caribbean, WINC. It seeks to address existing and emerging concerns of female entrepreneurs, including access to financing. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Andrew Chisholm. Thank you for watching.